Hey there, I'm glad you're here at Seaver Shoots back with another video. Today is going to be my third and final video talking about my primary weapon systems, Mark 111 Pro Upper. I've absolutely loved this upper. It has performed fantastically. And we're gonna talk about its journey with me and all the things that it's done really well through around 5,000-ish rounds over the last three years. But first, if you want to skip my ads, go ahead and skip to this time in the video. But I want to talk to you about something really cool, and it's my favorite pair of earbuds. These are from Axel Hearing Protection. They are a game changer. I wanted to get away from bulky muffs that got bumped off by stocks and braces and caused ringing in my ears. So I got into these instead. They have this really nice over ear hook style, which you can mold to your ears specifically. They are bendy so you can get them to fit your ears. They also come with really good tips. They are rated for 29 decibel reduction, which is way more than most muffs are rated for. If you go down to the link in my description, it'll take you to their website. They are doing 35% off right now. These are my go-to. I wear these at work. I wear these when I go running. I wear these in the gym. I wear these on walks. They're extremely comfortable. They block out the world. They have insane battery life. I'm pretty sure it's 12 hours runtime if you're listening to media, and then you can wear them with the active listening for 24 hours, if I remember correctly. They're awesome. They are the best uh, earbud style ear protection that currently exists on the market and I would highly recommend them. Again, if you want to pair 35% off, go down to the link in my description. One more thing I want to talk about is getting your feet right is important, especially when it comes to being physically active or being ready and able to respond to anything physically you got to have good functioning feet. And so in my opinion, you should switch to a barefoot shoe. Maybe you're already into barefoot shoes. Zero Shoes has some fantastic options for you. Again, link down in the description to take you over to Zero Shoes. They also do deals consistently. So head over there and check them out. I personally love their Prio, which is a very well-rounded training shoe. I did a review on it if you want to go and check that out. And they don't break the bank either. They are on par, if not uh, more affordable than Nike's Adidas Reeboks and they have the wide toe box and the zero drop which are all very good for your feet. My feet have gotten so much stronger. They are so much more comfortable and so much more able and my calves have become crazy strong. I'm currently wearing a pair of zero shoes. These are the Aptos. They're a nice canvas slip on. So I like to wear these to go on walks and just hang out and go out casually. And then I've got those Prios for all of my exercising needs. They also have hiking boots and uh, do it yourself kits for sandals, which is kind of different. So they're a little bit of a quirky brand, but I really like them. Again, link in the description. Go check them out and find yourself a pair of shoes that allow your feet to do what they're supposed to do. Now let's get into the video. Like I said, we are talking about the primary weapon systems Mark 111 Pro upper specifically. So when I went to build my first AR-15, I wanted to get a complete upper and a complete lower. 
and slap them together and be good to go. I didn't want to have to deal with all the intricacies of building it and making sure I built it well. I wanted to trust a known manufacturer to do that for me so I'd have something reliable right off the bat so I could just start training with it and getting used to the AR-15 system. So three years ago, I purchased this Mark 111 Pro Upper and it has performed flawlessly. So we'll just start with the reliability. The reliability has been perfect, absolutely perfect. We've had some dud rounds, so some ammo related issues where the round was a dud, tried it in mine, tried it in someone else's, and the round refused to fire. Outside of that, this thing has run without a hitch. No failures of any kind, no issues with beating or anything like that. It has just kept going. I've only cleaned it five times, once every thousand rounds, and that hasn't bothered it. It eats everything. Now, I went for this specific upper because of the reliability factor of a long stroke gas piston system. And we'll talk about that in just a second, but we're just going to go through it feature by feature and talk about how those features have held up and performed for me over the last three years. So starting here at the back, we have the Radian Raptor charging handle. It comes included with the primary weapon systems Mark 111 Pro upper. It comes with its bolt carrier group as well. So you don't have to source those parts separately. It all comes with it. Now, this is not the same Raptor that it came with. I switched it out because I wanted the colors, but the other one is on my 300 Blackout, which has had some ammo related jamming failures that may or may not have led to me having to kickstart it in order to get those rounds to eject. That charging handle has held up fine through all that kickstarting. I haven't bent it, haven't scratched it, no issues with it whatsoever. That thing continues to work. And so this one, I expect nothing but the exact same performance out of it. Now let's talk about the bolt carrier group, the heart and soul of the rifle. As you can see, it has their insignia on it, which tells you something, something that I don't love about this upper. So my one major con for this is the proprietary parts. Now I understand it and that's why I've gotten over it, but I still don't love it when a system is proprietary. So the reason that it's proprietary is because of their long stroke gas piston system. So at the top, of this bolt carrier group where the gas key would be there is a piston attached that runs up to about halfway up this hand guard now that means a couple things first of all the bolt carrier group itself is proprietary and second the uh, entire rail mechanism is also proprietary to primary weapon systems. So I cannot go out and take a Geissele rail, as an example, and slap it on here. It's not going to work. It doesn't have the necessary um, tolerances to allow that gas piston system. So there's your one downside, is how proprietary it is. Now the upside of this system is how incredibly reliable it is. There is a tendency with some bolt carrier groups, just normal ones and a gas gun, to tilt a little bit as they move backwards. That can cause reliability issues and cause unnecessary wear and tear on the system over time. What the piston does is it forces the bolt to travel back and forward completely flat. So that is something that is really cool about it. It's also something that keeps the gun extremely clean. The gas is stopped by the piston from blowing gas and debris back into the receiver. Obviously you'll still get some from the barrel from blowback when the round is fired, but you're not going to get any through your gas system, which I think is super cool. I have actually taken that specific thing out and cleaned it a little bit more regularly than the rest of the gun so that the piston doesn't get sticky up inside the handguard. Never had that happen, but I have seen the buildup on that piston and it's been really gnarly, especially since it's been suppressed. So I like to keep up with that specifically. Otherwise, there has been no crazy wear or tear on this bolt carrier group. The lugs are perfectly fine. I don't always clean it, but I do inspect it regularly just to see if everything is okay. And she is just chugging along perfectly. Plenty of rail space. I used to have an LPVO up here. It had um, flip up iron sights that were offset as well. So I was able to fit all of that on here. 
just fine and I have plans to fit more on this rail in the future. Would love to have a magnifier back here. Would love to have a laser system up front for uh, night vision purposes. Had no issues with um, lights and getting switches up along here. And the thing that I really like about this, and even though it's proprietary, it does work out and mate very well with this little nub right here. That's gonna keep anything from coming loose and twisting when you don't want it to twist. So I think that's kind of cool. One more little tiny con is just the way that you get to the adjustable gas system right here in the open face of your rail. Now I've tested covering that with switches and things like that. It doesn't cause any issues. It just makes it so that you can't get to your adjustments if you happen to need to. Now, if you adjust it to where it needs to be, like I have for this suppressor and it's fine and it's good to go and you're just gonna leave it there, then nothing to worry about. Um, that's not going to cause any problems covering that up though. I do like the idea of the uh, SIG gas piston system and I think the Bren has it as well and also if you use a rifle speed all of that adjustment takes place up here towards the front of the handguard and doesn't block anything which I would appreciate but nothing's perfect and this thing is reliable as heck so it's really really hard to complain talking about the adjustment that's one of the main reasons why I decided to go with this system. Reliability and adjustability. I knew I wanted to suppress my AR-15 at some point. So I wanted an adjustable gas system so I could tune that perfectly. Now this didn't cause a whole lot of crazy change in my ejection. It made it a little bit more towards three o'clock. So one adjustment managed to move it right back to a four o'clock ejection. That is how I know that I'm not over gassing things and putting unnecessary wear and tear on the system. So I really appreciate that ability to adjust. While we're talking about everything that's going on up here, I will mention the rail wrap. It does look good but it actually serves a purpose because of that gas piston riding so close to the top here. It does heat things up in this area just a little bit if you're running things particularly hard. Let's talk about the barrel just for a second. Fantastically accurate. I can shoot this thing well out to 500 and beyond. As long as I know my holds, I will make my hits. I will almost always make my hits at 100 yards, which I think is a more reasonable distance, especially for where I live and the situations I may be placed in. 100 yards and in, maybe even 50 yards and in. But at 100, this thing is right on, consistent every time, even through those 5,000 rounds. Haven't had any issues with accuracy as long as my zero has been really good. Now I want to talk about this thing as a suppressor host specifically because, like I said before, I wanted to suppress this before I even knew the ins and outs of suppressors. I knew that I was going to get into it at some point and I wanted a system that could handle that really, really well and really reliably. So the biggest thing that I will mention is that not only does it run reliably, but I am not getting gassed out like crazy by this thing. Now there's gonna be a couple different parts that contribute to that. Ones that aren't fully related to the gun itself are the charging handle with a really nice seal on the back here. Thank you, Radian. And then the suppressor itself, the Nomad is infamous for not adding a whole lot of back pressure, not making it so you get a whole lot of stuff thrown back in your face. The Nomad specifically deals really well with that. The one gun related thing that I will mention, um, kudos to primary weapon systems, is that that piston system, I think I talked about this a little bit earlier, really traps those gases as it's being pushed back. And then those gases end up getting pushed back forward as the gun cycles, nothing comes back in your face. In the videos of me shooting with the suppressor on for the last two months, you'll notice that that gas is all getting shot out forward, which I would much prefer <laughs> Than back in my face. I have shot some friends AR-15s with suppressors on them and sometimes I feel like my face is getting pelted with debris and my eyes are watering from the gas and that might just be a man up kind of thing but if my system can be preventative when it comes to gas in the face or gas out the port, gas anywhere that's going to make my life more difficult while I'm shooting then I'm going to go with that system and uh, this has just been 
flawless. Just to mention it, this thing is not going anywhere. I'm gonna continue to use it. It's gonna continue to be my daily driver as long as it remains as incredibly reliable as it is. I'd love to push this thing to 10,000 rounds. Maybe in another three years, I will do another video on this gun and basically say the same things about it. But for the most part, you'll see this thing in videos. You'll see this thing as a host for more cans, more lights, more optics, more uh, accessories uh, as I'm swapping things in and out and trying out new things. This thing isn't going anywhere and I would 100% trust my life to it five times over. That being said, I am precautious and I am looking into getting another one the issue is the price has gone up a little bit. So when I bought this, I got it for around 700 bucks. It was like 670 after taxes, something like that. On Brownells, I did use some discount codes, but they weren't that significant. The thing is, prices have just gone up and this guy is is no different. I have a hard time finding one for under $1,000. I see some every once in a while for 900. They don't last very long. I'm more seeing things towards the 11 and the 1200 range, which definitely takes it out of the budget category it was in before. It's still more budget friendly than some of the more premium brands that are out there, although I would personally consider this a premium brand based on how it has performed. So if you can find one at a good price, I would gobble it up. I'm planning on getting another one just so I have a backup one that's, you know, for the most part, exactly the same. Um, if I had to change things up, all I'd have to do is uh, pull off my suppressor and my accessories, slap them on the new one, wouldn't take me long, and everything would be the same, more or less. But it's always good to have a good, reliable backup to your good, reliable number one. Guys, if you liked this video, I'd appreciate it if you would like and subscribe. And as always, I will catch you later.